Coming up, he's the best heavyweight wrestler in America, and he wants to be the best in the world at the Rio Olympics. Turvel Delagnev joins us to tell us his remarkable story. Plus, the Buckeyes will get back to work three weeks from now. We talk to some of the Bucks' young players who could make a difference in 2016. And you ever wonder how Buckeye punter Cameron Johnston gets off some of those incredible punts? We went to his coach to find out how. Don't look back in anger. Oops, whoa. Pepsi Sports Saturday starts now. NBC4 presents the Pepsi Sports Saturday Show. Brought to you in part by NBC4, Pepsi, and The Basement Doctor. Good evening. Welcome in. We are just two weeks until I get out of here to go to the Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games. Cannot wait for it. And we have a guest here who's going to be making that same trip shortly thereafter. Aubrey, yes. who is this dude? He's a two-time <laughs> NCAA Division II national champion, the 2012 and 2016 U.S. Olympic Trials champion, and soon to be a two-time Olympian. Tervel Delagnev joins us in the studio. Welcome. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you again. Uh, we've re really enjoyed following your story, not only for this Olympic cycle, but four years ago when we first got to know you. Let's start with this year, uh, the Olympic Trials. Just a few months ago, uh, you you had a back injury a year ago. You were coming off that, and you really only had but one or two tournaments going into the end of the trials, but you got it done, and you and you <laughs> stamped your ticket back to Rio. How how take us through what the what the emotions were like going through trials? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was a hectic weekend. I mean, it's been a hectic year. You know, you have ups and downs. Every time you have pain, it like plays with your head as far as like how's this going to affect my performance. All that stuff goes through your head. Am I, you know, and I'm, you know, you're older, so it's like, well, does that play into it? Is this just my new normal? So you kind of, you kind of play these thoughts in your head. But I was able to, yeah, two tournaments. One of them was qualifying the weight for the games, so obviously really important. And then I was able to make the team. But that weekend, it was two days before I actually thought about quitting. I, wow. I texted all my coaches, um, and I was like, guys, I had some weird. I, I just had a light workout. I think it was two days before weigh-ins, and just had some weird pain freaked me out a little bit and so I text all my coaches and I'm like guys I, it's not even about performance I'm just worried about my health should I you know I was, I was trying to get like someone to give me the okay I right. sent everyone I knew like <laughs> like is it okay for me to just call it a career but all of them were kind of said the same thing they're like you got you're here you got to try they said if it hurts you're out but you got to at least test it so that's kind of I, I was kind of praying and I was like if it hurts at all I'm done and didn't hurt that day wow. so it's pretty wild um, and it's been it's been grimy back and forth since then you know it hasn't been a, 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 you know just an easy road since then it wasn't like some glorious oh and it never hurts again mm. but definitely on the rise getting better each week and things are looking up hopefully now take us back through your personal story we have some old photos of you from I mean when you were four years old now your family they came over from Bulgaria mm -hmm. tell us about that a little bit about your background yeah my family kind of decided to come over from Bulgaria when the wall fell, the communist regime kind of, you know, fell in, in those old Soviet states and they uh, were going to be a, you know, democracy. So it was, you know, the country wasn't built for that. Mm -hmm. So we just, they saw the writing on the wall, you know, you were going to be either really rich or you were going to be in poverty. And so we were one of the lucky ones to get out and, you know, spent a year in a refugee camp in Austria. Wow. Where I was able to get green cards with my family. My dad joined the army, got citizenship, uh, moved to San Diego. So I, most, I mostly remember the refugee camp. I have a lot, you know, my first memories. I remember the train ride leaving Bulgaria, mm -hmm. but I was four years old. So not a ton of memories. I've been back a couple times for competitions, but a lot of my family's there that I, you know, second cousins, cousins, things like that. But yeah, it's, it's, it was uh, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty much an American story, is what it is. And, you know, one of the interesting things about you as well, from a wrestling standpoint, you didn't start wrestling until, what, a junior year in high school. Mm -hmm. Then you went to a Division II college at Nebraska Kearney. You became a two-time NCAA champion there. So, obviously, something clicked for you in that time. What do you think it was? How, what, did, what became comfortable about wrestling for you? I mean, I loved it from, I'm not going to say day one, because the first year I joined wrestling to lose weight. <laughs> so, so that's so I'm not gonna like glorify. Look good like, for ladies, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. like I was I was a chubby kid. You know, football wasn't a thing in our household. I was a bigger kid. Didn't play any sports. A video game, video game addict. So, I was like, you know what? It's time to get fit, pick up some chicks. You know. So, was, <laughs> so, so that was kind of that was kind of the idea. And then after a year, the sport kind of gripped me, and I just fell in love with the learning aspect of it. And so, you know, I wasn't able to win state. I got fourth and third, but I was developing quickly. But I just needed time. I think that was the big thing. And in college, 
I still had that same drive. You know, guys have been wrestling for 14 years, kind of in the monotony of it. It was still fresh to me. It was still new. I was dying to learn everything I could about it. And so I think that was one of my advantages. You know, some people were like, you started super late. Well, that's kind of my story. Yeah. You know, and I always, I always joke around, like, Turkey doesn't care when I started. You know, right. Russia doesn't care when I started. I just know that they have to slap hands and wrestle. So I don't use it as a crutch. I don't use it, you know, it's just kind of my story. And uh, I'm just going to try to keep developing and using it. Now, four years ago, your first Olympics in London, you finished fifth, you know, just out of place with the medals. You've told us that you don't have the most fond memories of that experience, that you were really hard on yourself. Can you take us through that experience? Yeah, it was really tough. I was immature. I think the, the biggest thing that the problem stented from was I was under the impression that to be great, you had to be obsessed. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we kind of preach in sport is the great ones are obsessed. Every second of every day, their mind is on some form of sport activity. So it's like, if you're in practice, you're in practice. Then if you're not, if you're resting, you're watching video. Then if you're eating, you're thinking about opponents. And then you're right. And so, mm -hmm. so that's what I thought. So I got there and I busted my rib. The, you know, my rib popped out the day of the opening ceremonies. So that stressed me out. How's this going to affect me? And then the whole time I'm trying to don't look to the right or left, just tunnel vision, tunnel vision. Um, so, and then obviously it was the cherry on top with, you know, not getting the medal performance. So just kind of, you know, really messed with my psychology of what I thought, you know, a great athlete was and how to become one. So I've hopefully have some more wisdom coming into these games. Can't hurt, right? Yeah. The experience can't, can't, can't fault you here. Uh, you've been training here in Columbus, uh, the last, uh, six years or so at Ohio state at the regional training center there. And you've been able to wrestle some tremendous wrestlers just in that facility, let alone before you get to competitions. And this year is a perfect example. Kyle Snyder is wrestling in that facility, a guy who wrestled up at heavyweight in NCAAs this year. So you had a chance to wrestle with him a little bit. How has that experience, the two of you been able to wrestle and work together, prepared you both? Oh, it's been awesome. And yeah, I don't just wrestle him a little bit. I wrestle him a lot. You know, I mean, it's yeah. been, it's, it's pretty much as much as I can do. He's down for whatever, because he's a young buck. And I joke around like, <laughs> like, leave me alone. Like, <laughs> I, I'm done with this practice. You know, it's like, like you, yeah, okay. If I was 20, let's grind. But right. I, like, give me a second. <laughs> right. you know? So my training is a little different, but definitely it's been fun. We push each other. We figure, um, we figure things out. That's kind of how people get better. You know, when, pe when two people are curiously trying to solve the problem of the other person. That's kind of how you step ladder your way up to sure. getting better. So he's very competitive. He's a, you know, he's got a great mind for wrestling. And so he challenges me in that. And yeah, we, we, uh, we're, we're a good duo. It's been a lot of fun. Right. But wrestling's not your biggest job. You also have a beautiful family, mm -hmm. your wife, Kirsten, you have two young boys who could also potentially be wrestlers oh, one no day. Doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Uh, now they'll be going down to Rio with you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about them and that experience of them going with you? Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I think my oldest is, at the day of the Olympics, he'll be right under three and a half. Um, he's, you know, sharp as a tack. He's, he's impressively smart. He's, he remembers things from like a year ago, like that happened when he was like two. It's, you know, so he, I think he's going to remember this. Uh, he doesn't know the gravity of the situation. Right. I think my youngest, Titus, is just going to go crazy. <laughs> I'm just going to chase him around. But Isaiah, I think, is old enough to really, you know, understand, like, this is a big deal. We watched the, you know, some of the London opening ceremonies. And we're like, Daddy's going to walk in those in Rio, and he's in there somewhere in this one, you know, kind of mm -hmm. thing. So it's a blessing that we have, you know, we got all their accommodations figured out. Kirsten will be there. And this looks like my last tournament, yeah. you know, health and age-wise. So... I'm gonna, I want to make it you know, special, I want to have fun with it, and I want everyone to be there. Well, we can't wait to watch you there. And you were nice enough to bring along these guys right here. You brought your own shirts. Yeah. They're like a big deal, man. <laughs> these are awesome. Uh, so, so people can get these? People can get those. How do they get them? Well, my college coach set up a website. It's loperwrestling.com, L-O-P-E-R, wrestling.com. And it's right on the front page. $25, you get a shirt and a poster. And, yeah, it, it all goes for funding for my family to Rio. That's fantastic, buddy. We're really not only excited to see you, we're really proud of you. Yeah. Thank and you. it's been so fun to watch you these last six years and get to know you and your family. And uh, trust me, we don't get to cheer for people. <laughs> we're cheering for yes, you. Awesome. Like, we're, we're, on, we're on your team, no doubt. Uh, much more coming up in the show. We're going to go back on the road to Rio, an Ohio athlete who can leap higher than just about any human being ever. We'll meet